In this lecture series, I want to examine industrial product and classification of industrial products. Like I said earlier, industrial products are products that are purchased by business organizations for the purposes of producing another product, conducting operations, or reselling to final consumers. By now, we understand who are the business buyers. They are industrial firms that buy because they want to convert raw materials, fabricating materials and parts into finished products. They are services organizations that need product to conduct and deliver services. And finally, they are resellers, EDU sellers and retailers who buy from manufacturers and resell to other categories of customers. Having said this, industrial products are classified into five, unlike consumer products that are classified on into four. And these five categories of industrial products include number one, raw materials, number two, fabricating materials and parts, number three, installations, four, accessory equipment, number five, operating supplies and business services. Let us look at each of these five categories. Raw materials, as the name suggests, are industrial products that are found and used in their natural forms to produce finished products. Used in their natural form in the sense that raw materials have not undergone any prior processing. So they are used by industrial firms to produce finished products. For example, cocoa beverage organization like Wonder Food, Nestle, Cadbury's, Cadbury, and others use cocoa beans in their raw form to produce their various brands of beverages. Cowbell, Milo, Bonfita, Overteen, and others. So which mean, this means that raw materials go directly into the production of finished products. And by their characteristics, raw materials have limited supply. They are perishable. They are bulky. They vary in quality, depending on how far fertile are the lands on which they are cultivated. So therefore, industrial firms take time to evaluate the grace and quality of raw material before they ultimately buy them. Usually raw materials are distributed directly from the producers to the users, especially if they are buying in large quantity. Today, a number of large multinational organizations have integrated backward by also cultivating their own raw materials. For example, Chi, the manufacturer of Chivita and other brands of juice in Nigeria, have a large sprawling farmland dedicated for the cultivation 
of orange, mango, and other different types of foods that they use in the production of their various brands of juices. Raw material, let us also note that raw materials are purchased in very, very large quantity by manufacturers. Sometimes they also encourage and support farmers to also cultivate these raw materials and the farmers do not sell to any other manufacturer other than the manufacturer that provides support for them. The second one is fabricating materials and parts. This is two in one. The first one is fabricating materials and the second one is fabricating parts. Taking together, let us note that these two, unlike raw materials, have been processed to some degree. Remember that I said that raw materials have not undergone, undergone prior processing. But if you are talking of fabricating materials and parts, they have been processed to some degree. Let us now look at the difference between fabricating materials and parts. Fabricating materials will be processed further before they are used in the production of final products. For example, flour used in the baking of bread is a good example of fabricating materials. Why? It's because they have been processed and barred before they are now sold to bakers, master bakers, who will now use it in the production of loaves of bread. In the case of fabricating parts, though they have been also processed to a some degree, but fabricating parts will not undergo further processing. They will go into the production of final products in their present forms. And examples of this include buttons on our shirts, zippers on our trousers, tires on our automobiles. So these are good examples of fabricating parts. The third category of industrial products are installations. Installations are heavy equipment, large, durable, and expensive manufactured industrial products that are used to transform raw materials, fabricating materials, and or fabricating parts into finished products. Without installations, there is no production activities that can be undertaken by any industrial concern. Nestle cannot produce any of its products without installation parties. There are machinery, factories, office buildings, generating set in our climb where electricity is electricity supply is erratic generating set is a good example of installation so industrial firms like Nestle, Capri, Wonder Food, Unilever can never undertake any industrial activities without this critical installation and for this reason we often say that installations affect the scale and scope of production that is any time installation breakdown especially plant and machinery any time 
the Greek town, production will cease. Industrial firms will not be able to produce. So therefore, these types of industrial products affect the scale and scope of production. And because they are durable products, they last a long time, 20, 30, 40 years, depending on level of maintenance they are given. They also depreciate over a long period of time. They are not raw materials, they are not semi uh, raw materials or fabricating materials that quickly depreciate within a short time. They are, not, they are non durable industrial products. Installations are usually very, very lasting for a very long period of time. And as a result, they also depreciate over the same period of time. The next one is accessory equipment. Accessory equipment, unlike, industry, unlike uh, installations, are less durable and less expensive. That is, they are not as durable, they are not as expensive as installation products. And as a result, they do not significantly affect the scope and scale of production. Accessory because they are required to facilitate smooth operations. Examples of accessory equipment include computer, printers, photocopiers, scanners. Every organization, whether industrial, whether surface oriented, whether resellers, resellers need accessory equipment to ensure smooth conduct of their production and operations. And the last one is operating supplies or business services. Operating supplies are popularly referred to as maintenance, replies, and operating supplies, MROs. And they are convenience products of industrial products. Don't forget that under consumer products, we have convenient products. I said they are low unit price products, uh, widely uh, distributed products with low unit value that consumers buy frequently. So these are examples of business supplies or operating supplies. They are products that industrial organizations, services organizations buy regularly to ensure seamless operations, to ensure that the activities are not disrupted. And some of these include advertising, cleaning, security, petrol, lubricants, stationaries, and a whole lot of products that are purchased on a regular basis to make sure that the wheel of business is not grinded. Anytime there is disruption in the supply of these critical operating supplies, the activities of the organization might be stopped. For example, installations require diesel, require lubricants like oil to work optimally. So where this is not available, the optimal performance of plant and machinery may be significantly affected or even stopped. Consider there are five categories of industrial products. They are one, I want to recapitulate, they are one, raw materials, 
Two, fabricating materials and parts. Three, installations. Four, accessory equipment. And five, operating supplies and business services. They are also known as maintenance, repair, and operating supplies, MRO supplies. Thank you for your time.